watch TV. She allowed me to play around. She didn't keep me at home saying, no, you have to just do Quran all your day. So I had to, I, I was able to play, I was able to have TV, but if I didn't do my Quran right, I'm not allowed. So like, it's, it's like I have to do my Quran right or else I'm not going to watch TV. And uh, so my mom really motivated me with these kind of schedules and stuff like that, making sure that we don't miss a single day at all. Brother, how would your mum um, keep you interested? Like, it's, it's obviously it's very difficult to memorize the Quran. People struggle at an age of 40 and 50 and all that. How did she keep you interested uh, in memorizing the Quran? Subhanallah, interest, it came from my mom. My mom, she was, she was very, she used to love the Quran a lot. She, like, her eyes always tear when she reads the Quran and all that. But, to me, it's no surprise. I've gone to Ethiopia four times and I've visited my grandfather, her, ma her, her father. And subhanAllah, the whole day, he, never, he only stops reading Quran when he's praying, when he's talking to people, when he's eating, and when he's going to sleep to rest. Mm -hmm. The whole day he's reading Quran and making dhikr and everything. Mm -hmm. And he just never gets bored. We always think like, how do you never get bored? And subhanAllah, my mom, because uh, my mom was very interested and she used to love the Qur'an and I used to say, if my mom loves the Qur'an, I need to love the Qur'an too. So like my mom was the example there. And so she, she used to, by, by her love to Qur'an, she would keep me interested to loving the Qur'an and to like always, always, my mom would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? A big alim. What do you want to be when you grow up? A doctor. What do you want to be when you grow up? A hafiz of the Qur'an. And then, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me a hafiz al-Qur'an. But because of this, this kind of motivation that my, mom, that my mom gave me from her own actions and from her actually speaking to me, it gave, it gave, it gave me the interest there. But like if some people, they just read the Qur'an, like reading the Qur'an only in Ramadan or something like that, the kids, they're not going to be like, they're not going to be interested because there's going to be like some third thing that they do after they've done their school and they've done their play. They're not going to really think about it. Like, why do my parents read the Qur'an so well? Why do my parents, they cry when they read the Qur'an? So that kind of thing also gives me that kind of motivation, that, that uh, kind of interest for reading the Qur'an and for becoming a scholar, inshallah. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. And this is, um, that's what we need. We need young men like you uh, to inspire other youth. How would you, allow me to say at the moment, that there will be young men that would be listening to you at the moment. How would you inspire them to read the Qur'an, understand the Qur'an, and memorize the Qur'an? If what advice would you give them? Advice? There's only three things I can say. Be consistent, never give up, and don't waste your time. These three things. Be consistent, don't miss a day without practicing your verses, even if it's small. Be consistent there. And uh, never give up, because if you give up, that's it. We never gave up. I would maybe sometimes I would I have I practiced all those four days like how I mentioned before. Yes. And when mom give when my mom gives me the pretest, I have no idea what I'm reading. But then I would never give up. That Thursday, those Fridays, I would practice as hard as I can to get back to where I was. And then Alhamdulillah, in the end of the week, it was as if I never did that on the Wednesday. Do you have other siblings? Do you have other brothers? No. Well, I do have uh, uh, like uh, half siblings from my dad's other wife. Yeah. Yeah, I have two brothers and two sisters. So your mother is a single mother. Yeah, she was divorced when I, when she was pregnant. Yeah. And uh, Subhanallah, she by on her own, single her mom, she was the one who raised me up until where I am today. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless her. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protect her. Obviously, she, she's um, something special, um, uh, very rare to find uh, women that focus on their kids, especially in this day and age. And I hope that, uh, you know, the mothers that are out there uh, take her as an example. SubhanAllah, it seems like we're, we're hearing a story of the Sahaba, like the companions. It, it, these stories, it's, it's very rare, you know, to, to actually um, uh, believe that they exist in this day and age. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And yeah. there was one thing that my mom really, like she really focused on. There was a quote. It's, teach your children the Qur'an. The Qur'an will teach them everything. My mom never took me to tutor. Never, never ever taught me anything about English or maths or all these subjects in school. 
But Alhamdulillah, I had naplan tests in year three and year five, and I got the highest scores in the year level. But my mom, she only taught me the Quran, and from Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, from that. He taught me everything else, English, maths, and everything. So my mom didn't worry anything about that. No tutor, nothing. Only what I learned from school, only what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught me, that was the only thing that had made me. Subhanallah, my mom only and only taught me Quran. MashaAllah. I tell you what, you're not only inspiring the kids that are out there, you're inspiring, inspiring the adults and you're inspiring myself. May Allah bless you. Mm. Who was, um, allow me to say, besides your mother, who was influential on you? Like who, who had an impact upon you in your life? Uh, my mom, firstly. Yeah. And uh, so with impact, yeah. there's uh, so many different, like people, like when I see people in the Quran, reading Quran so well, when I see people, imams, when I see, especially like we, we have, my mom, she bought a special type of TV uh, thing. It's like a, I don't know, it's some sort of a programmer thing. Yeah, yeah, receiver thing. Yeah. And uh, it's got many channels of like from like international channels mm -hmm. and one of them is peace tv i used to all the time after i finished my work even when i used to watch tv maybe when i was a kid i would watch like those kids stuff in there but normally i would be watching things like peace tv and stuff like that and so i used to see for example dr zakir naik and some other shuyukh and i would say one day i want to be like them Allah.